Hello there. You're welcome to this week's edition of our program, Living Couple. Today we are in the residence of Elder and Mrs. Shingul Wigwe, a couple that have been married for well over 50 years. You will get to know details about that shortly. But one thing I can also guarantee you on this particular episode is that you have quite a lot to learn from this particular couple because together they have gone through thick and thin. But by the grace of God, they have remained a couple. Join us as we go along now to meet Elder Shingo Wigwe and his wife on this particular episode of the program. Do come along. Like I told you earlier on, we, we are delighted and honored to be hosted by Elder and Mommy Shingo Wigwe. Um, this is a couple that have been married, like I told you, for well over 50 years. But the story is not for me to tell. You will hear their story, and um, I, can, I can just give you a hint that it's a, a, a story that tells a lot about good experiences in marriage. Once again, you are welcome to the program. My name is Biodo Oyetoro. So join me as I welcome um, Daddy Shingo Wigwe to the program. Thank you very much, Daddy, for hosting Thank you, us. Daddy, you're welcome. Thank you very much, you're sir. Welcome. And Mommy, we're really very glad that you opened your doors to, to receive us today for this uh, interview session. Thank you very much, ma. You're welcome. Thank you, ma. Okay, we'll start right away. The, the, the program is about, um, you know, uh, celebrating uh, people who have been married for, well, nothing less than 15 or 20 years. Because in the world that we live in today, quite a lot of people are thinking otherwise. You, you get people, young people who get married, and less than five years after, they are thinking of going their separate ways. What is wrong? Is it a marriage institution that has a problem? Is it the human beings who enter into marriage that just don't get it wrong? We will hear the story of a couple, like I said, who are parents and grandparents now. And there are lessons that I'm sure we would learn from it. So I want to start right away by asking you, uh, Sir and Ma, please tell us the story behind your uh, coming in contact with each other. How did you meet? Uh, just a, a little bit of a background story <laughs> of how you <laughs> met each other. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> now, <clears throat> we met several years ago. Um, mommy used to work in the hospital. And I had a friend, he was on admission in the hospital. I went to the hospital, and my friend said, look, this <coughs> is a wonderful nurse. As I saw her, my spirit told me within me, said, this is your wife. I didn't understand it. This is your wife. So I went away seeing my friend that day. Subsequent visits, I saw her there. She wondered why I was so frequent to the hospital. She asked me, she asked me a funny question one of these days. She said, do you now work in the hospital? I said, we shall soon discover if I work in the hospital. <laughs> and so that was how we, we met. Uh, as soon as I got that message, this is your wife, I tried to cultivate that relationship. I tried to cultivate that relationship because my father had told me, so you have to marry early. You have to get children early. Your children must grow up with you. There's a lot of beauty when your children grow up with you. So I've been married for 56 years. June 62, I got, we got married. And uh, God blessed this marriage. He blessed the, blessed the union. If our first son hadn't gone to be with the Lord, he will be 55 now. Or 50. Yes, he would have been 55 at this point in time. Mm. So that was how we got to meet ourselves. Mm. Okay, sir. Let me ask Mommy. Uh, mommy, how did this, permit me to you use the word, how did this young boy then of uh, 56 years then, uh, 56 years ago, how did he appeal to you as a man you wanted to be a friend with, not to talk of even <laughs> wanting to marry? <laughs> Uh, 
Um, actually, nothing occurred to me then mm. because I was quite young. Okay. Marriage did not cross my mind. And um, a young student no, just came in actually from to Enugu, posted to Enugu. Every six o'clock, those who've come in to visit would be asked to go back, to go home and leave the ward. And I used to tell all of them, including him, I said, please go. It's time the you know, visiting time is over. Then he'll turn around to the window and continue speaking to the friend. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was it. And he kept coming. And uh, I remember that Christmas, he gave me a card. Mm -hmm. And I was living with my cousin, who was an accountant in the a NDC then. And I took the card. I was naive. I said, see the card given to me, including other things that others gave to me. Apparently, I used to have a lot and lot of presents. And um, <laughs> then he persisted. And uh, he would come onto our streets almost every day. And until the children of my cousin, they noticed him. And uh, they'll be calling on their mom or their dad. Papa Abiala, Abiala, Mommy Abiala. That was their language. That see, oh, he has come again, oh, he has come. And uh, that was when my cousin noticed and started finding out. And um, I thought he would stop coming because then my mother had made me some long gowns. No long gowns. I wear some to sleep. I wear some in the day. So n I thought what would attract anybody, <laughs> you know. And uh, then they just opened what they call New Heaven in Enugu then. I would follow the other children. We will go there to carry wood back to the house. But I would never break the wood because it will blister my so I would never do that. And he was still coming. So my cousin said one day, what, what does he see? What is it? And um, I think it was too much for him at one time. He complained to his uh, boss, the chief accountant of the corporation. And uh, he complained to his friends because he used to be a chorister in St. Bart's. And I think he noticed that some of those boys were his friends. He complained to them. I didn't know them. Then, um, then late Mr. Wanguru, he would now trace him and trace where he lived because my cousin was very upset. Because at this time, I had suitors mm. from my own parts of the country. The parents, different parents, they've seen me and they wanted a wife for their sons who were abroad. Both of them apparently were abroad. And uh, they approached my, my parents at home. They approached everybody and my cousin, having known this, and then seeing him coming, no, he, he couldn't take it. And uh, it was too much. <laughs> Even the director of medical services then mm. in Enugu, they had to complain to him. Mm. They took the message that far. Okay, sir. Th thank you very much, Mommy. L let me, um, be because this program is also supposed to be a sort of um, a, a, a mild um, counseling for yes. those who are married, maybe young in marriage, or those who are still aspiring <coughs> to. I, I, I noted um, three 
just three major issues in marriage uh, from what both of you said, sir and ma. The first is inner conviction. Daddy, daddy told us that you were just convinced then that, look, this is my wife. Sir, daddy, as an elder and uh, somebody who, who is very, very well qualified to counsel a person uh, in, in mar marital issues, what would you say is the place of inner conviction about who you want to marry? Inner conviction, the conviction is so important. Because one thing I said to myself, I wasn't born again. Yes, yes. I said to myself, on no account was I going to get a second wife. Mm -hmm. On no account was I going to take a wife that would be imposed on me. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it required an inner conviction. We have a saying in my place that when you put a load on your, you know, you know, we used to carry load on the head. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you did it in your time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we met a little. When you are able to lift something and carry it on your head, the chances, the probability is that you'll be able to carry it far. Mm. But if somebody should aid you to take a load and put on your head, <coughs> you can't go too far with it. Mm. And so when you have an inner conviction and you are determined, you are made up your mind, this is my wife, the chances are that that marriage is likely to last. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, let me ask mommy um, uh, about this. Um, Daddy said it uh, on his own part, and then you also mentioned, you said you were young at that time. Uh, Daddy also said that his parents told him he had to marry early. So these days, at times, w when we see a young couple having issues, people at times look at their age and think that probably they, they were not mature enough to get married. That's why they're having issues. Mommy, what would you have to say to counsel people about the place of age? Is it really about age in marriage or is it about maybe some other things? You were quite young, according to you, when you got married and daddy was also young then. I mean, his parents had told him he had to marry early. So what would you say? Uh, I mean, what would be your comments about the, the place or position of age when a person wants to get married? Hmm. Marriage actually for a girl, a girl has to marry young. And uh, I would say that uh, you have to be matured in your mind, mind. to be married. Hmm. I didn't marry immediately. Yes. No, it was like three years after before we got married. So you had time to get to know each other? Mm, well, maybe, if you say so, yes. Because but we were not close. He would come and spend time in the hospital, do the night duty and all that. But that was all. And uh, what I want to say there is that you have to be matured in the mind, especially the man because he's going to bear the responsibilities. As I said earlier on, um, I had nothing in mind. I was just naive. It didn't cross my mind. So anybody planning to get into marriage should just be matured, get herself or himself ready, and said, I'm plunging myself inside this. I will not come back. Well, again, maybe the background is there. He, the father, married one, and in their family, that's how they do, and they don't divorce. The same thing where I'm coming from. So maybe that is the thing. Because if you are from a polygamous home, it will be a different thing. OK, thank you. Ma. Um, and lastly, um, just briefly, sir. You, you told us that your parents said you should, they advised you that you should marry early. Um, uh, these days, um, the young ones tend to just throw away everything their parents um, try to counsel them. Wh what would you say should be the position of parents? Their, their own part in marriage, should it be to take the driver's seat and decide who their son or their daughter sees, who 
uh, he or she you know interacts with or just for them to give ad pieces of advice like your parents did to guide the person you have to give pieces of advice to guide the children you can't take the driver's seat because when you would have taken the driver's seat on your departure then you let the boy take over the driver's seat then they start having problems you can't take the driver's seat because one of the things that led me in my marriage i said to myself if i follow my parents and they give me a wife you never know what happens because the prayer of everyone is that you know your your children should survive you yeah you know my parents who are likely to live after me, before me if they left after me and then eventually i found difficulty with my wife <coughs> so, oh my parents gave me this wife. So, the people will be laughing at you you won't be a fool your parents gave you a wife but you've been with that wife till now your parents are gone you have to live with that wife it is important that you have the inner conviction this is my wife before you go for that wife, you have to be convinced about where you're going to. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, the, the other um, question or area I want us to look at is um, in terms of the attraction. Mommy, you said um, your, your mother had made uh, long gowns for you. <laughs> <laughs> Those were not the days that ladies used to walk the streets uh, like half naked, you know, like half of their bodies were exposed. So it was not, uh, it didn't have anything to do with the physical um, attraction or the face value attraction. And uh, when he was going to give you a present, uh, he gave you a card. He didn't buy a car as a gift. Birthday so, card. No, Christmas. Christmas card. <laughs> okay. W what um, would you say um, for you, maybe I should ask Daddy first because Daddy was the one. <laughs> Daddy, yes. it was Daddy who started making the the uh, the move first. What the man is always the aggressor. The aggressor. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, what, what was it that attracted you to her? Son? No, you see, <laughs> again, in that conviction, yes. you know, clearly, as a young girl, and within me, I had my spirit say, "This." is your wife. There was nothing I could pinpoint as my major attraction. I know I've had this is your wife. And I started walking towards it. I had to pursue it. And you have to try to cultivate it gradually. If you moved too fast, you could miss her. Mm. If you were too slow, you could lose her as well. Yeah. So, I was trying to keep in touch, keep in touch. Because I think um, the wife you marry is a very crucial thing in life. And I believe in as much as I had that voice, this is your wife, it was important to me then to ensure that that would be my wife. Okay, oh, thank you, sir. Mommy, um, yes, you didn't know, you are not expecting somebody to be, you know, uh, running after you, you know, at the time that he started coming. But like you said, it took about three years after. What eventually convinced you about, uh, I mean, for you to, to have wanted to marry him? After, maybe after you got to know each other, what, what, what was it? It was not, I mean, from his story, it was not as if he was all over you with uh, gifts, with, uh, you know, chocolate, with uh, ice cream and all that <laughs> then. So what, what was it beyond, the, beyond face value, be, be beyond material things? What was it that you eventually would say in this young man, okay, I, I think I want to be with him? Actually, I did not decide anything. Mm. The first impression I had was a nice young man with good countenance. Mm. And uh, I didn't even know his background. Um, he spoke well. Mm. And with the friend, you could somehow hear the trend of their conversation. There were young men just talking away. And uh, 
as I said, somebody with good countenance and uh, he comes in, he smiles to you, you know, and that's all. That, there was nothing too spectacular because we did, we, as I said, we didn't just marry. Mm. We had to go to Britain. God just granted us favor. I think that what I can say is that God's hand has been in it. Mm. Because it didn't take long, I, was, I had to leave Nigeria okay. abroad for studies. And uh, as soon as he heard, he said, ah, go on, I'm coming. <laughs> ah, ah, go on. <laughs> he said, go, I'm coming. <laughs> I mean, he didn't pay my transport, nothing. <laughs> and so that was it. Mm. So the thing continued at the other end. Mm. That was how it took so long. So, uh, okay, um, uh, Daddy, permit me to, to ask on a lighter mood, sir. So... <laughs> You had to trail her even up to <laughs> going to the United Kingdom after she traveled for, for studies. Persistence, sir. Huh? I said persistence. You had I to was persist. Her. <laughs> <laughs> now, she had a scholarship to go and study yes. in Britain. Mm -hmm. And when she muted that to me, I told her I was coming as well. Mm. Because I was confident I was going to win my scholarship. Uh, because I mean, I tried in my, you know, area of uh, studies, both at home and so on, and God granted me favor. Mm. I got scholarship just nine months after she left, and I told her I would be there. And you, you, you actually went to the parts of the UK where she went to, or no, you for me, those matter, were not the days of UK transport is not a problem. <laughs> yeah. you see, as it's not a problem. And but those were not the days of uh, GSM phones or emails. No, or but there were box telephones. You could dial. You could, you know, so facilities for ringing. It's not like here. If you wanted to ring anybody here, and you, wherever you were living, you would go to Marina Bay. Those days, mm. to ring abroad, it was a big challenge. But the UK, every home actually had telephone. Every home had telephone. And where I was living, my telephone bills were high. <laughs> <laughs> but, how, but how did you know her? Okay, it means maybe after she got there, she gave you her contact and. No, well, you. I knew she was going here, and uh, I got, uh, you know, she she knew my address, so she was. It will interest you to know that. We exchanged mails once every day. Mm. I was every day. I was so. writing every day, and I was receiving response every day from the UK. Mm. Oh, it was quite interesting. For nine months, there was not the only day we, I did not get her mail. It was a Sunday, and that was the only day she did not get my mail as well. Mm. And I'll tell you something. You know, we had Kinsway here. Yes. If you went to Kinsway here, like on the 23rd of December, you could point to a gift, give her address in London to be delivered on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, she would get that gift. That was as sophisticated as Nigeria was um, then. Mm. Our mills were running, post offices were performing. So I get back from work today, I would write a letter, and then um, in a matter of two, three days, she would get it. And I'll get a response. So the following that I'm writing on that one, that I've got nine months of consistent letter writing. <laughs> 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 Mommy, it, it would be a good thing. It takes to, a lot of interest <laughs> and to be doing that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mommy, did, did, did you keep those letters? <laughs> 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 uh, I, I kept them, but. Um, on the long run, oh, I had to over, dispose over of time. them, mm. destroy them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he was actually, uh, what do I call it now? <laughs> he kept, he kept on persisting. He did it religiously mm. because <laughs> at the post office in the in the hostel, they knew me. If I don't get a mail, no other person would get. <laughs> They knew me, so mm. <laughs> quite interesting. I want to well, viewers. Le let me just um, uh, say this. Uh, let me remind you: you are watching a living couple on Dove Television, and we're talking to 
a couple. Of course, they are living by the grace of God even after uh, 56 years. Elder and uh, Mrs. Shingo Wigwe were in their, they are in their house today. We are talking to them about their, their lives uh, together as a couple not as um, one person we've gone to bring from one part of the country, the other one we had to, but as people who after well over 50 years, they are still, well over 56 years, I beg your pardon, they are still living together as, as a couple. Thank you very much for being with us. Okay, um, mommy and daddy, you're, you're on the program today because you've been together for, like I said, uh, uh, quite uh, a long time now. I don't want to betray my age on air, but I'll say <laughs> <laughs> you've been together for longer than I've been around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory be to God. So le let's talk about those years now, since after marriage, um, after I got married, between then and now. Now, um, I know that for two human beings, even if you are going to be together for just, um, for just a year, you still need to get to understand each other, to get used to each other. Um, mommy, how how long would you say it, it took you to, you know, get used to each other? We're talking about after the wedding now, after you had got married, after you were married. Um, That's a different phase. So if, if it <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely, yes. ma, definitely. Yes. Mm. Um, the problem had been there. We had problems. Mm. His parents had gotten a girl for him. So he was having problems that we, I did not know. My own came up after we've married and we send pictures and things, cakes down home. And uh, my mom had problem with our relations. Um, they said uh, she's given the daughter to a man, a three alphabet man, hmm. I B O Ibu. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they actually shook her. Hmm. And uh, not until we came home, then we went straight to my village and did the native custom. And everybody, they were all settled and things became a bit lighter. Again, it's different from courtship. Um, the day he gave me an engagement ring, it was a big surprise, because he has come from where he was in Southampton. I was in Hertfordshire. Mm. We come occasionally down to London, then we just go and eat or we go and watch film, and then we disperse. He goes back, and I return to my station. Um, when we got home now, that was when the whole st marriage started. started. <laughs> and um, he, he went to work one day. In fact, when I arrived, he came back before me. The day I arrived was the day he bought bulb and put <laughs> in, was it two bedroom or one bedroom mm -hmm. house he got? No chair, nothing. It was my table, my bed, my box that we use as a dining table. Wow. Because I came by ship mm. or rail. Mm. And, um, Then I had a baby. I had to come home because he said I must have my baby at home instead of there. And uh, one day he went to work nicely, just as you are, to work, and came back in an army uniform. Hmm. And uh, that was the beginning of my eyes seeing what was going to, to happen. Mm. And uh, luckily, I just had a baby, and my mother was there. So my mother had to explain to me the life of a young man 
who is looking up for a future. Hmm. <coughs> okay, sir. Okay, ma. Uh, uh, that is, um, she, she said uh, something now. Um, th the first was um, the fact that you had somebody your parents wanted you to marry. Mm. Uh, that had to do with parents. Mm. Now, on her side, uh, her, her mother's um, relatives were a little bit um, against uh, she marrying somebody from wh where you come from. Now, how were you able to handle those two, um, should I say, uh, challenges? Now, the root of it is this. Before she left abroad, we had traveled out in Nigeria. Yes. My mom had visited me. And I wanted her to see my mother. And I wanted my mother to see her as well. So she came. When she saw my mom, and she now left and went abroad, I reminded my mom, the girl you saw that day is the one I want to get married to. I had not told her I was going to marry her. <laughs> I was managing the information. I wanted to carry my family along with First. me. Hmm. Ah, my mother said, what? When I told my mother that, uh, she asked me a question, where does she come from? I told her. She shook her head. I said, no, no, no think about it properly. You know, and I would prefer that superior argument would prevail. Mm -hmm. If you have any reason to stop me from marrying her, then we'll look at that. <coughs> I said she had no reason. The only reason she had was for where she came from. I said, uh, uh, Mama, that will not work. That will not work. And they went and hastily were arranging for me to get somebody to get <laughs> Mm -hmm. But they didn't have the opportunity because mm -hmm. it was time for me to move out. <laughs> so I had to travel out. So that, that was what happened as far yes. as that was concerned. So I was able to handle that. I didn't let her know that because I felt if she knew that my parents were opposed to it, she would quickly jettison me. Yeah. So I managed that information properly. Mm -hmm. The middle of my mind. This is my wife. Okay, I I, I want to believe um, our viewers are watching, and you are you are actually following to 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 learn one or two things, especially those who are you know just planning to get married. Um, Daddy said something which we we have to note at this uh, moment because quite a lot of the young ones these days they get everything sorted out. Uh, you know, before they even come to tell the, the, their parents. And Daddy said he wanted to carry his family along with him. So he, he had mentioned to his, uh, his, his parents, to his mom, and of course, by, uh, I mean, by extension, to his parents, that this is a person um, he wanted to get married to. Not that uh, probably they would have sorted everything, they're engaged, uh, they're living together before the parents uh, in, the, in the village or in the town get to know what is happening. Thank you very much uh, for that, sir. But what about on, on, on her own side, or maybe mommy should answer that, how, uh, should I say, how did God help you or help your mom to uh, was it just because he came and did the traditional things he needed to do, or what went into trying to uh, convince the family, the, your mom's relatives, to, to accept him? Somebody they had said, like you told us, uh, he's from another place, IBU. <laughs> so <laughs> IBU. Well, IBU. <laughs> so how, how did God help you to you know, settle that with, with your mom's relatives? Yes. Because as a young girl in school, I was always in the Sunday school. I was participating actively. I was a brownie and I was a girl guide. Mm -hmm. And in fact, 
during harvest, I always feature prominently. We'll sing, we'll act plays in the school. So, and um, in fact, when Queen Elizabeth came to Nigeria then, it was a unanimous, even the whole town, I should say, I should go and present a bouquet of flowers to her wow. at Mary Slezo's uh, grave. So that had brought me up a bit. Because uh, then my mom used to be a pre my parents that attended Presbyterian Church. So that picture had been in that church for as long as I grew up. Mm. It just recently that they renovated that church, that they removed it. Mm. So everybody knew that I was inclined to being in the church. And um, I must say I was praying. Really, I was praying. Because um, the day he gave me engagement ring, at Knightsbridge in London, we were just passing through. And we saw this uh, uh, a, a, a jewelry shop. And he said, oh, let's call, let's go in there. It didn't cross my mind. I never asked him for marriage. Mm. I never, it didn't occur to me because I knew if I left it, my people were there to, they wanted. And they even wanted to know where I was in London. But they hadn't the address. He just stopped. We must enter there. And he gave me an engagement ring. I was startled. <laughs> because I didn't know how to write to my parents to tell them this. Because I know the home I came from. So... Uh, that was it. Like you said, quite a lot of other things uh, fell into place naturally because, mm. Um, mm. like you said earlier, God must have had a hand in it. I was very prayerful as a child. Mm. I didn't know why I did that. Mm. Because I used to put his name. Anybody who happened to talk to me, even the boys that were abroad, I'll put their name in my Bible and I'll shake it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> they see the one that will drop <laughs> first. <laughs> I didn't know any other way to do it. <laughs> and uh, at times his name will drop. Mm. At times another person's name will drop. Mm. But I was asking God to please help me because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anything about marriage. Mm. I didn't know. In my home we had peace, my mom and everybody. And I used to hear that... Um, uh, people used to fight, etc. And uh, mm. I, I know I wouldn't be able to fight. I didn't have strength, mm. so I was actually very prayerful. Mm. Uh, okay, so each time you put the name and it dropped, another time will come. You will put back the name again and still oh shake yes, the Bible. <laughs> and see how many, <laughs> how, how many times how that many person's times name falls in a week. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Th that uh, then I'll okay. pray towards that. that <laughs> okay, <laughs> Th thank you very much. Ma. Um, okay, ma, um, l l let me ask you that definitely in marriage, there must have been marriage, they say, is a give and take <coughs> thing. Um, there must have been cases where you, you have had to tolerate each other. Um, uh, for instance, uh, my wife would tell me you, you can take the throw pillow put it on your legs and she will tell you that's not the way to do it. You are supposed to put it behind you. Or maybe you want to, <laughs> you know, different ways of telling things. One of my friends once told me that when he got married, he, he had to take the grace of God for him not to fight his wife. He preferred, once he picks up the toothpaste, he just presses it. The wife will come and rearrange the tube properly and let the thing, he comes there the next morning, you know. So w what, in what ways or what are the things you have you can remember that you have had to concede for each other s just so that the, 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 the marriage would continue to, to thrive. Maybe, uh, le let me start with that. Is that maybe there some things, are, ah, no, she used to be like this. Like, naturally, we, we have seen mommies, like the very quiet and reserved <laughs> person, but it could, it could be one of the things you have had to come I'll to. tell you something. Yes, sir. I wasn't born again. Yes, sir. I didn't claim to be good, but to talk of being very good. Mm. I asked God, Father, 
give me a wife that will tolerate me. Because I would not want a broken home. And one of the things I discovered about her, she was gentle, she was patient, she was enduring, and I, I thought God indeed had answered my prayers. We've had a very, very peaceful home. And thank God it was through her instrumentality that I got to the church and gave my life to Christ. Because I went to church as usual, because yeah. I used to be a chorister and all yes. that. Yes. And the time she asked me, you have to take me to my church. I said, look, my friend, we have been here. We, 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 we have, you had the hymns. Yeah. You've had the pipe organs. Mm -hmm. We prayed, mm -hmm. we've read the Bible, mm -hmm. we've chanted the Psalms. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? They give you food there or meat. What is it you are looking for? <laughs> and the first day I took her to her church, the day it dawned on me, the, that day the Holy Spirit walked on me mm -hmm. and I agreed to take her to her church. We left my church bright day, it was a very beautiful day. But before we got to her church, there was a storm. Mm. The storm. And papers were flying right, left, and center. The cloud nimbus had gathered. It was going to rain heavily. I said, well, they're praising God here. They're not native doctors. I would go to her church. What could I do? I wouldn't let this woman to come out of the church, you know, in the rain and begin to look for a lift approach to the church or something and she was running into the church as if she was she was a sprinter mm -hmm. and i called her i said is there anything wrong with your head why are you running this way is it not church you can't believe it i picked my pace and found myself in that church i listened to their hymns i said oh my god this is a disgusting thing mm -hmm. i listened to their crosses i was Pain. I was having a headache. <laughs> and then he came to the word. I had, the Lord is my shepherd. I said, my God. This, I will probably have been hearing before the preacher was born. <laughs> is this what this lady has, is going to put me through? I listened to the word. You can't believe it. Within 10 minutes, tears were beginning to drop from my eyes. I said, I've never seen it in this fashion. That was the transformation. You're now talking about give and take. It was from at that point, I experienced a change in life. I started understanding what I'm supposed to do. Or else this toothpaste thing you are talking about. You know yes. at one time that toothpaste was yes. made by with metal. <laughs> yes. And yes. It, it, nice yes. plastic. Yes. So it's so easy. Yes. Yes. It was with yes. metal and mm -hmm. there was a big, big yes. problem. Mm -hmm. She would just squeeze it anyhow. <laughs> and you find the metal in the <laughs> this figure of one word. Like that. So it, it, that was mm -hmm. it was at that same point. We had this problem about marriage. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change a job. I was disgusted with where I was. I don't want to mention exactly what led to my disgust. Mm -hmm. And then I had been an, to interview with the army, electrical mechanical engineers. They were looking for electrical engineers. They were looking for mechanical engineers. So I had gone there and I had succeeded, but I was delayed. I didn't want to. I was trying to make up my mind. But something just happened where I was. And I just went there. I didn't tell her. Collected my letter. They said they were going to kick me out, kick, kick me up, you know. I went, they took me on some 30 minutes drill, and then gave me my uniform, which I wore for the drill, and then took others, and then had to drive my car home in a military uniform. I had left home, just dressed <laughs> as you <laughs> were. I came back home, transformed, and became a soldier. She couldn't believe this is the husband that left home this morning. She came to feel it. This was exactly <laughs> The mother was there. Mm. I would have lost her that day. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the mother had to pacify her. Mm. 
so we have we have had that conflict and again but the characters which i had mentioned earlier came to bear and you know our marriage was moving on smoothly but it became i would say a marriage worth emulating after the transformation when jesus came into my life amen amen mommy um the, the, your own side of this particular you mentioned it um, earlier on that he left home one day dressed formally but came back in military uniform now uh, today in today's um, marriages uh, the the woman will prob probably just pack her things and say look you and i didn't sign for this i'm going to my parents house <laughs> now how that that was part of i mean definitely one of the things you have had to like tolerate just um, agree with him on even though he didn't tell you before before it uh, for the marriage to go on um, d d just share with us briefly ma how were you able to handle it mm -hmm. seeing your husband coming back from <laughs> work one day <laughs> and he had, he had become another uh, person for me sir <laughs> Mm. You know, there is no crown without a cross. Yeah. Even rose flowers, they have mm. thorns. Yeah. Uh, it was a big lesson. And uh, I calmed down because my mom spoke to me. Mm. I didn't talk to him. I wasn't violent. I didn't show any that I was not happy. Mm. He would have at least mentioned to me. Mm. And... Uh, that was like beginning, because in marriage, like every other marriage, you must have frictions. I must say that I had another friction, which was bigger than that. Mm. I wanted to go back to Britain. And uh, because he said, oh, just come and have the baby. I thought that was it. Then he asked me, when you marry, you have to go on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Is that what they do in marriage? That is never heard that after marrying, you'll go on sabbatical. So what will happen to the children? Gosh. And um, by this time, we have grown and we got to Ibadan. And I said, I must go. Ah, I don't want to be like this now. What will I tell my people? I mean, you know what he did? He just held my ankle. Twisted it a little. <laughs> the thing went out of joint. <laughs> no fighting, no problem, nothing. Just to hinder you from, to stop you from this. Yes. I said, what is that in aid of? He said, oh, you know, when I was in the army, or, you know, where, you know, he said, in the army, we are taught to dismantle obstacles. <laughs> oh. It dawned on me that I'm finished. So I didn't know what to do. I've never fought him. He never fought me. Amen. Then I said, oh, it's now time for me to decide either to look for to be a career woman or to be a married woman. And uh, I prayed over it. I prayed, I prayed, I cried. He said, uh, Sir, you can't go. You can't go on sabbatical. Where am I leaving the children for? Oh. So after praying for a long while, I made up my mind. Okay, I will stay because I have children. If I left my children, it wouldn't be nice. And they all, the chil he loves the children. Then I say, ah, he'll collect all the love. Mm -hmm. Then I won't get anything. Maybe by the time I come back, uh, I mean, by the time I return from abroad, mm -hmm. the children will not like me anymore. So I decided that I'll go in for marriage. And as usual, I don't complain. I don't talk. Everything died down.
Mr. Scott. Okay, sir. Uh, okay, Ma and sir, thank you uh, very much. Well, our time is uh, running, but uh, before we uh, wind this up, uh, Daddy and Mommy, um, God has blessed your marriage with children and with grandchildren. And um, to the glory of God, um, we know if uh, we know some of them, they are doing uh, very well, even spiritual children. I want um, um, just briefly from Daddy and then Mommy, what will be your um, your advice to couples on raising children? We we see it in movies. We see some people once the father is trying to you know train the children to go on a particular way, the mother will, uh, once he has gone out, will say, look, don't, don't mind him, he's too harsh, or he, at times it is the mother that is trying her best to make sure the children grow up uh, properly, and the father will be like spoiling them. So what would be your advice to, to parents? Uh, you are very well qualified to, to advise, to, to advise uh, couples on that, on raising children, the mm. kind of agreement, uh, the kind of disposition both the father and the mother should have towards this. Well, my advice to parents when they are raising children is that they must never be seen by those children to be at conflict in their advice or counsel to those children. And the mother must be careful when the father is giving instruction to the children to not to counter the instruction of the father. Thank God the Bible is there now as a guide. There are certain instructions you give to children that will provoke the children. As much as possible, the parents must avoid such instructions. Now, parents must see themselves as role models, role models, because the challenges of broken home to children is a terrible one. You don't want your children to go through it. And therefore, the moment you have set your hands on the plow, you must ensure that you keep steady. You never look back. Because it is detrimental to children that parents after a time decide to abandon them and they fight, fight for those children. It must never be seen to happen if your children must have any pride at all. So, for both of you, you must ensure you carry yourself in such a manner that your children will remain proud of you. They look up to you as role model at all times. You will have disagreement, there's no doubt about it. But again, let the Bible, instructions in that Bible, be a guide. You don't beat your wife unless you have become the madman of Gadara, <laughs> who was cutting himself because your wife is supposed to be your body. Two, you don't get angry endlessly and perhaps resort to the bar to go and drink. No, you don't, you don't do that. You will get angry, all right, but you make up quickly, too. Sometimes you get angry only because you want to drive home a point so that she understands mm -hmm. this is not right. So this is my advice to parents. Okay. And the parents must ensure that they don't push their children to go and get married to some guys because they like the girls. The boy is going to live with the girl. And so parents must be very careful when counseling their children as to who they should man get married to. I don't know if there are anything yes, I'm missing. Sir. Otherwise, yes, sir. Um, yeah. I can go on and on. <laughs> yes, sir. I've been on this for 56 <laughs> years now. Yes, sir. Oh. You are you're very <laughs> well qualified. So, Mommy, would you want to add something to that briefly? Um, in marriage, the woman is a home. Hmm. The woman keeps the home whether you like it or not. And uh, she's always there for the children. So there are two things, or at least two. The grace of God and being silent. And I want to say that there are different stages in this marriage. The courtship, the early marriage, later on, and then the retired <laughs> period. Courtship is very sweet. Early marriage, there is problem because the man is young. He must be young. Whether you like it or not, he must be young. 
and uh, he will face challenges at work and at play, at home, everywhere. Even where he goes to play tennis or re re relax, he must have problems. So the woman must ask for the grace of God, that unmerited favor from God, to be able to keep the home. You know, like uh, Joshua 1, 8 says, you must have good success and you must have patience and must be prepared to be passionate. You must love your husband, otherwise you can't marry him. You must love your husband very, very well. And uh, the second thing is to be silent because um, you'll be provoked almost every other day. You don't have to answer. You don't have to just drive your points down once, not more than that. And allow him to decide. You don't argue. Well, I don't argue because I know it will bring problem. I don't want to find out if I'm right. I rather pretend to be stupid in marriage. If a woman is not stupid in marriage, she will not do it. Because you have, can have all the degrees. But when you are a wife, you are a wife now. God say you are the he uh, help meets. Yeah. You must submit. Uh -huh. So those are the things. And uh, because we do a lot of counseling, yes. this is what we talk. This is how we do with them. Okay. At least let me mention those two. Yes. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, Daddy, uh, we are deeply, deeply grateful. Mommy, we are sincerely very grateful that you've given us uh, this time. I, I, I know if we were to do maybe another episode and another episode of the program, there will still be quite a lot we can learn from you. But for this particular time, this is um, about all we can take. But before, just before we go, we have a, just a small gift here for you. It's just a souvenir. Uh, and it has on it a uh, living couple uh, with uh, a dove inscription on it just uh, to celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate the grace of God and the blessings and favor of God upon your marriage. We pray that God Almighty will grant you even more years on earth uh, together in Jesus' name. Thank you very yes, much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yes, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Well, viewers, we want to sincerely thank you. We have been speaking with Elder and uh, mommy, Shingo Wigwe, um, a couple that by the grace of God have been together for 56 years. And to the glory of God, they're still together. In fact, you need to sp spend just a, f uh, a few minutes in their houses and you, I mean in their house, and you begin to wonder, uh, have they spent up to 56 years or are they still in courtship or did they just get married to each other? Uh, because you can still feel the romance uh, in the air, the love in the air. Thank you very much once again Sama, for hosting us and i want to say thank you to our viewers for watching i want to believe you have learned something uh, it's for those of us who are planning to get married it's for those of us who are young in marriage who also trust god that we want to remain in our marriages for a long time and we want to raise children that we will all be proud of later in future thank you very much for watching until when next we come your way on another edition of the program stay blessed <music>